You can't tell me that's not impressive. That is cool. Hello and welcome to the VR Cauldron. I'm Al and today we're talking about a brand new game releasing today called The Stranger VR by an indie studio called Reality Arts Studio. It's a single player sci-fi first person shooter set in their words an incredibly detailed exotic world. The plot is as follows. The world has nearly been destroyed by machines from a parallel dimension 3,000 years ago in a great battle which the ancients call the Rift War. Now the rest of mankind lives underground and only a few are able to venture to the surface. These people are known as strangers. The Stranger has been funded by an Epic Games Mega Grant. It's billed as an incredibly intense FPS like an open world doom. The game has seven weapons with various custom options, 15 enemy types, 12 levels total, and an average of six hours gameplay. Its normal price will be $9.99 US dollars, or about £7.19, but with an extra 10% off for the first week of release. Before we get to my opinions, full disclosure, the devs kindly reached out and gave me a free copy ahead of release, and I've been playing it for the last few days. Actually, this is the first time this has happened for me, so I'm very thankful. I just hope it's not going to be the last. I'm going to be honest, but I also don't want to be trashing an indie devs product because they are so far the lifeblood of VR gaming. So this isn't going to be a little five minute thing, I'm going to go all in, and if you make it to the end, you are a legend. So, in we go. So we're first treated to some kind of sci-fi future war cutscene that isn't in VR, rather it's a flat screen plonked in front of your face like I'm wearing an old video viewer headset thing. The cutscene was kind of cool even though I had no idea what it was on about. There was a narration but it was a bit quiet and I forgot what they said. The machines. They destroyed everything. In the end, we have won. Uh, I had to keep my head perfectly still as otherwise, because it moved with me, I'd get motion sick with the uh, image following me around. Uh, when we get to the game, the menu options are limited. There aren't any comfort options though. I'm told they could be introduced if there's enough demand. Personally, I didn't get motion sick at all during the game, but my biggest issue was a lack of a smooth turning option. Currently, the only way to turn without doing so physically was to press a button and snap turn in 90 degree increments, and only in one direction. Sadly, the snap turn is instant, so it's very easy to lose which way you are going, since the levels often looked exactly the same in all directions. Luckily, there's a handy waypoint arrow that you can spawn on your wrist that helps you go in the right direction. Waypoint. That's handy. There are also checkpoints that shoot a beam of light into the sky, which most of the time are very obvious, so it's not hard to find your way. There are a few graphic and audio options, but that's about it. You don't really need any height options, as it doesn't really matter if you're sitting or standing. You always travel at the same speed, unlike in some games where if you physically duck, you go into a sort of slow-moving stealth mode. There's none of that here. So loading into the actual game and you're asked to enter a quick tutorial where you're shown the images of Vive ones and Oculus Touch controllers and told to press various buttons to do certain actions. You get to try a few weapons and kill a few baddies and then you're ready. It's all very straightforward though personally I found some of the button presses hard to remember because the controls weren't really built for immersion. In Half-Life Alex, for example, all of the controls feel really natural really quickly. They also use a lot of the commonly used locomotion options in games. In The Stranger, there's that button that turns you in 90 degree steps. It's not a left or right on the stick, it's just a, a button. Another opens a wrist menu. One cycles through the weapons, but only in one direction with the Oculus Touch. So if you go too far, you need to cycle back round again. There's one button that does nothing, which made the one-way weapon cycle a bit weird. The grip button puts a grenade in your hand, which you throw by kind of flicking and without having to let go of the grip button. It felt so unnatural and the grenade didn't seem to follow any natural laws of physics that I just ignored grenades for the most part. You also have a wrist blade. Just like the Predator, you access this by pressing the left grip and trigger buttons at the same time. Although, it gets stage fright sometimes and doesn't always want to come out to play. 
When it is out, I wasn't even sure if I was doing anything at first, but it does. Enemies sense the presence of the blade and they die or bleed. It doesn't seem to make any meaningful contact. You just kind of wave it at the enemies and it goes through them, but kills them. Like grenades, I didn't really bother with it. Stop! Stop! When I first saw the game, I immediately thought, wow, it's like Destiny in VR, it looks great. And to be fair, it does look very, very good. There's some really cool scenery, like the big Lord of the Rings style statues. And You can't tell me that's not impressive. That is cool. Dead giants buried in the sand, which I was sure were going to come to life. They didn't. But overall, it's a bit gloomy and lifeless. I know it's kind of meant to be lifeless since most of humanity has been mowed down, but I'd maybe like a bit of weather like rain or a bit of wind to blow the sand around. The enemies appear out of nowhere, wave by wave. They're not living in the world. They just appear when you get to a certain point. I'd love to have walked over a hill and suddenly there was a group of them that hadn't seen me yet so I could get my rocket launcher and take out a bunch before maybe switching to a sniper rifle to pick off others as they approached. Instead, they just kind of appear and you just shoot and strafe and rinse and repeat. In a world where we've now got games like Boneworks and Blade and Sorcery and, and other physics-based games, it's weird to play a VR game where nothing is physics-based. Not me, not enemies, not any part of the world itself. You can't grab anything. The only way to interact is your dark matter, infinite ammo, your limited rockets, or the wavy wrist blade. Nothing is destructible, and there are no objects that move. It felt odd that when I pressed grip on the controller, the hands that did nothing, they were just like plastic gloves that a grenade would appear in when I pressed the right button. My right hand was stuck to whichever gun I had out, so I couldn't drop it to the floor. But then you can't drop guns in Half-Life Alex either, but at least you can put them away and then use your hands. I felt like I was moving around in Google Earth sometimes. It, it does look better than Google Earth though, and standing under some of the statues is, to be fair, really cool. And only in VR can you get this sense of scale. Unfortunately, it's not really an open world. It's definitely wide open, but not an open world. You go from checkpoint to checkpoint, killing enemies, and you get to a cave, and then suddenly the level is over. There we go. Oh. Ah. I feel like maybe I'm on the next level, but I really have no idea if I am or not. And sadly, I got to a certain point and I was unable to continue as it was crashing my rift. My rift went haywire and at that point, every single time, it would lose tracking and I'd have to restart the game. At this point, devs. I played it for about three hours, so maybe I was on level six, and that brings me to one of my biggest complaints about the game, is that I have no idea why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, the lack of level numbers might not be a big issue if I had some kind of story to follow. Yes, we know about the world, but I don't know what I'm doing in it. I'm a stranger, I can live on the surface, but I've got no idea where I'm going and what I want to find or, or why I'm risking my life at all. I get to big bosses, but they weren't really guarding anything in particular. They were just kind of there in my way. There's going to be three in there. What? What is this? Shit, it made the, 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 the inception sound. I wasn't even sure if I was killing them for a while either because some of them take so many hits I questioned if I should have been shooting them in the head or in their glowy bits. Eventually they die though and strangely they seem to be weak in the groin. So I shoot him in the groin, shoot him in the groin. I generally felt like I was just blindly advancing with no idea when it's all about to end. After each boss, I was half expecting a black screen with the words game over, you win. It was like watching a YouTube video that you're not really enjoying but you're not able to tap the screen or move the mouse to find out how long's left. If you got this far, then it doesn't sound too good, does it? But I'll tell you now, I'm going to end on a positive, but it is going to get worse before it gets better. I'll start whizzing through the rest of my issues. The music is from the guys who did Unreal Tournament. It's okay, just kind of nondescript electronic music, not exactly the Tron Legacy soundtrack. It's functional, but I ended up turning it off as it was drowning out the sounds of the guns, which sadly weren't as beefy as I would have liked. I'm a massive fan of sci-fi shooters, whether it's the endless bullet storm of Gears of War or the lasers of something like Echo Combat or Tower Tag. I want a really good, satisfying gun sound, as well as a nice impact sound 
when you hit the mobs. Sadly, the guns in this didn't carry any weight. I mean, literally, too, you can hold a rocket launcher no problem in one hand. But the projectiles don't feel like they have any power to them. They don't affect the scenery and the enemies just soak them up without looking injured until some hidden health meter reaches zero and then they die in an explosion of gore, which, to be fair, is pretty cool. And then more come. It actually got quite annoying when I could see a checkpoint and more enemies would spawn. Although not quite as annoying as dying when you could see a checkpoint. But luckily you never rewind too far. Because there aren't any health packs, you have to wait for your shields and health to regenerate. And this would mean standing around for a bit after a fight because you'd never know when more enemies would spawn in. And you'd really want to make that next checkpoint without having to do a few fights again. There are weapon upgrade stations and they do fully replenish your health and shields but only once every 60 seconds. So you can't just camp them and blast away without dodging any bullets. The game unfortunately isn't optimised too well at the moment, I had a lot of stutters, though I was playing on the highest settings and I've only got a 1660, I had to turn it down to the second highest when I encountered the drones. Oh, the, the things, oh god, slowing down, Jesus Christ they're fast. As they really mess with my system, however the devs do know about the drones and they will be patching it if they haven't already. It caused the game to crash a few times too, but at least my progress was saved. I'm not going to allow any early optimization scores to affect my review score though, so just keep an eye on reviews on Steam to make sure it gets fixed. Uh, something else that might need fixing is the enemy AI. They're basically zombies. Well, zombies that tell me I'm a piece of shit anyway. <laughs> Why do you call me that? I don't like that. They see me, they head towards me, and they try to kill me. If something is in the way, well, they get stuck in it. There were quite a few times when I would just position myself behind some big object and shoot, knowing full well that they couldn't hurt me at all, and even their little laser beams would just hit the object and not get anywhere near me. And if I got it wrong, I'd just die and I'd come back. Having said that, I did have a few issues when dying and coming back. I didn't come back wrong. Pet cemetery. But sometimes I'd respawn with the bosses right on top of me and they'd kill me right away. And then I'd just keep repeating the cycle. God. Uh oh. Crap. What, what, what? I'm just dying in... Ugh. What? What? Oh, that, you can't do that! Luckily, I managed to escape using other interesting cheaty mechanic, the super speed of the teleportation movement option. With the bosses that called me a piece of shit, I found that I couldn't just strafe and shoot, as they would shoot ahead of me, so I'd have to be really quick and dodge left and right. I don't think that was on purpose though, I, I just think they weren't very good at aiming. So instead, if I couldn't find an object to hide behind, I'd often teleport really far away in a fraction of a second, and then turn and shoot them from a distance as they approached. Then, when they finally reached me, I'd do it again. That did introduce its own problems, because if you get too far away, the enemies despawn again. This is actually to help with performance, which is probably also the reason we can't have the enemies living in the world at all times. However, they could spawn a bit further away and out of sight, so at least it felt like they were always there. I really was hoping that this game was like a VR Destiny or even a VR Gears of War, but to be fair, they actually never said it was. It was after the first time I upgraded my weapons that it dawned on me that I'd been approaching this game all wrong. And the worst part about it was that it was me that was thinking Gears or Destiny. They specifically mentioned Doom, and it is like Doom. Loads of enemies, check. Slow moving projectiles I can strafe away from, check. I was quite bored at first, but after the first upgrades, especially the one especially the one that gave the pistol the ability to slow down enemies, I found myself having a lot more fun. Enemies would spawn, I'd slow them down, and then I'd blast them to bits with the shotgun. Which I actually did find to be a satisfying weapon. Just like Doom, there's loads of mobs, they run and shoot at you, and they explode into pieces when you kill them. It is really quite spectacular sometimes. I particularly like it when the heads of the bosses pop off. Trying to get? So after the first hour, I did really enjoy blasting people with my upgraded shotgun and opening my weapon skill tree to see what I could afford to upgrade. I had no idea what I was doing or why, but I was having fun. The game was still by no means perfect, far from it, but it was alright in a kind of innocent 90s kind of way. It reminded me of Serious Sam or the Dr. Beef mod of Quake 2. You really need to take your 2020 VR gamer hat off when playing this one, and if you do, there's quite a lot to like. Well, there's a few things to like, but you can like them quite a lot. It's nice to mindlessly blow baddies up in a world that looks really good 
on the surface. And then there's the price. If I had spent over £15 on this game, I probably would have been disappointed and got a refund, especially since the first hour or so was a bit tedious. Actually, to be fair, I probably could have upgraded my weapons sooner. I just forgot that I could upgrade, so let's pretend it was only the first half an hour that was tedious. But at seven or so pounds, less than that in the first week, it's not a bad deal, especially considering the price of the Serious Sam games when they're not on sale. I think if this game were to improve the impact of all the guns, the grenades, and the wrist blade, fix the AI, maybe add a few physics objects, improve stability and the turning motion then someone playing ten dollars would be very happy right now i think if you paid ten dollars you'd be fairly happy what i would love to see is a multiplayer option co-op would make the game ten times more fun maybe we've up to four players but pvp multiplayer could be amazing in this game give everyone a jetpack to get around some places to hide like caves or debris people would have a lot of fun Throw in some customization so people can look unique. Allow people to pick two weapons per game that they can keep on their back or their hip. Let people drop and swap weapons. I think we'd be on to a winner. In its current state, I'm going to give the Stranger VR a 5 out of 10, but increasing to 6 out of 10 if they manage to fix a few of the issues. The game is shallow, good looking fun at a low price. Right, if that review helps you decide whether you want to buy the game, do give this video a thumbs up and if you disagree, let's have some nice healthy discussion before you just leave a thumbs down and despawn. I'm not sure if anyone else would want me to try their games after that, but if you're a game maker and you think your game can survive the cauldron, do drop me an email. Thanks again to Reality Art Studio for supplying the game. It's definitely got potential and I do wish you the best of luck. So, I've been Al. Thanks for watching the VR Cauldron, take care of yourselves, and I hope to see you next time. See ya! Close your eyes, when I'm upside down.